everybody and welcome back. I am the Sovereign and this is my court. If this is your first time in attendance, hello. Please consider hitting the subscribe button before you leave our kingdom. Welcome to summertime. It is hot, it is humid, it is just warm outside. So yes, I am just trying to keep it cool over here and I have been busy ever since summer kicked up. I mean, if you didn't know, it is premium prime motorcycle season. Yes, I do drive a motorcycle. And if you haven't seen me on this channel, I do have two channels and I've been on the family channel linked above known as the House of Sovereign, where I share space with my mom and my family and I do some vlogging, but mostly I do a lot of motorcycle vlogs. And this past week has been a lot of motorcycle riding. I did a mani ride, you guys, a mani ride. A mani ride means hundreds, and I mean hundreds of bikes. It's basically a freeway takeover with hundreds of motorcycles driving down the freeway from Oakland to like past Sacramento. So if you saw us in Northern California this past weekend, sorry for the traffic. Okay, we were just having some fun. We were having some fun. So if you wanna see what I've been getting up to since summer kicked up, check out the House of Sovereign channel. That is also where you will find Mama Sovereign. She prefers to be over there, though the House of Sovereign tends to be a bit smaller then my main channel, which is totally fine. I just, don't worry, I don't plan on having more than two channels. I just don't necessarily completely trust YouTube. And I am just, I know better than to put all of my eggs in one basket. So I do have two channels. I will only ever have two channels. Do not worry about it. You can pick one or the other or both. It's totally fine. You can also always catch me somewhere on Instagram. My Instagram is linked in the description box below. I just posted a picture. My uh, little tomato plants are finally starting to grow. I'm so excited. But I do have several live streams that I have kept posted on my Instagram. So if you wanna see like, cause I talk behind the scenes tea over there. I'm very candid over there and I do keep them posted. So if you want some of that candid, you know, noise, talk, whatever, you need something to listen to while you're doing the dishes or procrastinating your homework. I do have IG Lives where we discuss a lot of things also on my Instagram, very active over there. So, so it is pageant off season. There are no major pageants happening right now or really anytime soon, but I already miss the Queens. Like I already miss the pageant talk, the pageant news, the pageant tea. I already miss it. So even though it is off season, of course you guys know I'm still gonna be here on YouTube and every now and then I'm gonna drop some pageant videos because there's always, there's always something going on in my brain. Today we're going to talk about how to bring a little bit of that regality into your everyday life. We're talking about how to style crowns and tiaras in the real world. For those of you who thought tiaras were only an adornment worn by monarchs or royalty, you would be Wrong, happily wrong. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you it is possible and completely appropriate to bring a bit of that regality and princessy feel into your everyday life and I'm gonna show you how. Now, first things first, I do want you to have a bit of the education. My court is very educated and I'm going to give you the necessary tools to talk about this when anybody questions you about it. Though I myself, even though I wear crowns all the time in my everyday life, no one really questions it. I do want you to be educated. Since ancient times, human beings have often sought ways to enhance their own beauty. Part of this took form in head adornments, traditionally utilizing leaves and flowers, natural elements that would form a wreath to adorn a head. Examples of this can be seen in ancient Greek athletes. When presented with a prize, their head would be adorned with the olive wreath. This is also known as a laurel wreath, which still persists today. If you go through the emblems of many different countries, you will see that the wreath is still very much present. In fact, to this day, the laurel wreath is still presented to master's degree students upon graduation. Now moving back into tiaras, right? Because that's what we're all here for. The Romans actually progressed upon what the Greeks had done previously, but instead of utilizing the simple natural elements, they began to forge these tiaras out of permanent materials, metals, and adding gemstones. This is where tiaras began to take the form that we know today. In fact, Napoleon Bonaparte was really the person that brought back tiaras past the Middle Ages when he crowned his first queen with a silver diamond encrusted tiara, a fashion at the time that had been long since left behind. In fact, I have an example of my Bonaparte tiara still here with me. This is an example of the Bonaparte tiara, which you can see still has the design of the laurel wreath, but it is forged in metal and diamonds. This is what became of the traditional Greek flowers and leaves. 
Now, Napoleon Bonaparte was in the 19th century, but even in the Middle Ages, people were wearing tiaras and different headwear, but they would utilize pretty much any material they had available. Tiaras would be made out of fabric, out of leaves, out of coral. So anybody who ever tells you you have a fake crown or a fake tiara, there's no such thing. That's almost like saying you have a fake hat. You can make a hat out of anything. I've made paper hats. Like there's no such thing as a fake hat. A tiara literally can be made out of any material, but the materials that we see predominantly utilized today only started to happen around the 19th century because wealthy people wanted to showcase their wealth and rank. There was a point in the 18th century where having a tiara as a noble woman or an aristocrat was mandatory. If you were to be gathering or partying or conversing within the presence of high ranking nobility or royalty, it was almost a mandated part of your uniform to arrive at a queen's court with a tiara. Every woman had to have one. So by owning a tiara, you number one showed your status as a courtier being able to bask and party within the presence of royalty, but also showcasing your wealth with the designs and stones and materials showcased on your tiara. Like I said, tiaras were never mandated specifically only for royalty. Any woman that was of nobility or high rank or wealth or status of any sort had a tiara. Recall Princess Di and the Spencer tiara. Princess Diana was not royal before her marriage to Prince Charles. However, her family already possessed a tiara of their own. This is because it had been passed down through the years because that was already a high ranking family. Though they were not royalty, as many nobility or high ranking aristocratic families possessed at the time, they already had their own iconic tiara, which Princess Di insisted on wearing during her wedding. Now through the years, tiaras have fallen in and out of fashion. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, it would obviously be very tone deaf to be adorning yourself with millions of dollars worth of diamonds whilst the rest of the world is struggling to put food on the table. So there are moments and points in history where the royalty and high ranking nobility of the world thought it unwise to flaunt their wealth. But tiaras definitely came back in the 1940s and 50s, and you can see women such as Elizabeth Taylor and Grace Kelly wearing their own diamond tiaras on the red carpet and fashion events and late night galas. Now in the year 2021, is the average person typically sporting a tiara? No, not to say that you can't, but it's not necessarily in fashion right now. And most people assume that tiaras are specifically for royalty, which as I have said, you would be wrong. Brides have hung on to this tradition to this day. Traditionally, crowns and tiaras were only worn by married women, obviously married women of status. So it was of a monumentous moment for a bride to be able to wear her first tiara upon her wedding day, which we see continuing to this day where brides are still wearing tiaras on top and underneath their veils. Though I'm sure this comes as a surprise to some of us pageant fans who are well aware that the pageant queens are not allowed to be married, are in fact mandated to be single in order to be bestowed a crown. Actually, pageants go against their tradition because they were meant for married women. Though there are some distinctions to be made about the different types of headwear that most people just assume under the entire umbrella of crown or tiara, they are not all the same thing. A crown is a full circle head adornment that goes all the way around a head. It fully encompasses a head. This is a crown. This is supposed to be worn by heads of state or true monarchs. An actual crown actually is reserved for royalty, specifically heads of state. I'm not talking princesses like Will and Kate, they cannot wear a crown. I'm talking specifically the Queen's crowns. We see actual crowns being worn by Miss Grand and Miss World. I am currently wearing my Andromeda tiara. A tiara is a half circle. Unlike a crown, it does not encompass the entire head. It is open at the back end. This is a tiara. Tiaras that we are very familiar with is that of the Mawad tiara worn by Miss Universe. Beyond that, we have diadems and circlets, which can be confused as the same thing, but this is an example of a diadem the diadem that a lot of you are probably familiar with is Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem of Hogwarts. Diadems are typically going to have some sort of adornment or jewelry hanging down low onto your forehead or, you know, your skin. So this would be like a diadem and, and note, this diadem does have the traditional leaf designs that originally came from the Greeks themselves. 
Tradition and history transcends. And then there's the circlet. Here's a picture of me wearing my circlet, though it does have a bit of a unique design. Circlets are typically a full circle and were implemented during the medieval times and not really worn by many people today, except for <laughs> yours truly. I think this is also to be mentioned. This is a coronet. A coronet is also worn by Miss International. So now that you know a bit of the history of crowns, tiaras, circlets, diadems, you know the difference, you know what they are, you know their tradition a little bit. Of course, there's a bit of research that you can do on your own if you really wanna get in depth like I have, but there's no need to be a complete nerd about it, okay? Cause now we need to figure out, okay, well, how can I wear this in my everyday life? Like spill, spill, sis, spill. How do I, how do I make this happen? I got you. If you're truly wanting to wear a crown during your everyday life. Now, number one, if you're confident and you have no problem wearing whatever the hell you want, then do what you want and you really don't need this video. But this video is really catered to those people who really want to wear it in a serious way without looking childish or, you know, looking like they're attention seeking. Um, I understand what you are thinking. A crown is like any other piece of jewelry. It is a jewelry item, the same as a necklace, the same as a ring, the same as earrings. It is a piece of jewelry and you want to think of it as such. So thinking, in the terms of a necklace, you do not want to wear your biggest, most flamboyant, most expensive necklace to brunch. Usually you wouldn't do that. You could, but traditionally that would be frowned upon. You're not gonna wear giant diamonds and emeralds and rubies and complete like wedding jewelry to brunch. You wanna think of your tiaras in the same way. Another tradition that the pageant community largely ignores is the fact that Typically, the most grand tiaras and crowns were only worn for evening events. Obviously, we do not follow this. So when choosing what tiara you want to wear, you have to take into account the time of day and what your plans are for that day. You will see the Queen of England only specifically wears her most precious and prized and expensive jewelry during her most formal engagements. Remember when I said tiaras can be made of literally any type of material you want, right? So this, as I said, is the Andromeda tiara. It's not very eye-catching. There's no stones, there's no beadwork, there's no, there's not much of anything up there. It's actually very brass. This, this is a traditional Roman style of, I'm looking at my monitor. This is a traditional style of Roman tiara. Truly, if I wanted this to be even more low key, I would have did my hair in an updo, which I plan to do. I was just too lazy to do it. But this is an example of a very subdued tiara that's not so eye-catching that people really aren't gonna bat so much of an eye at. It's very understated. However, it's still kind of tall. And if you're going to work or if you're going out with your family, sometimes you still don't want that much attention on you, people looking at you crazy. So you're gonna wanna get yourself something smaller, perhaps something like this. It's not very tall, and if I were to lay it flat against my hair, it almost looks like a headband. Those are easily little tiaras that you can get away with. They may have a little bit of beading or stonework, but they're not so eye-catching and they're not tall enough for anyone to really bat an eye at. They look almost like a headband, but a bit more flashy. And if you were going to wear something during your everyday life, having one of these or something similar would be one of the best ways to go. You can stand it up a little bit for more of a tiara effect, or you can you know, lay it down a bit more for more of a headband effect. You can also invest in different types of encrusted or bejeweled headbands. They have them in big or small, depending on the type of style you wanna go for, but just having that little bit of glitz in your hair helps you get a bit of that regal royal look. You can get a mini tiara, you can get a rhinestone headband, or you can actually get stoned bobby pins as seen in this video. I have pearl long extension bobby pins that I'm able to stick in any hairstyle that I do. And depending on how I style my hair and how I put the pins, I can actually make it look like a tiara. Now these type of pins come in pretty much any type of stone that you would want. I have pearls, but you can easily get diamonds or emeralds or rubies to mimic the same look and kind of just have jewels laid throughout your hair. One of the best ways to get a nice regal look without overstating it with like a full circle crown is an updo, specifically a bun. 
because you can literally put anything around it and it's just gonna look super cute. You can put the little pins around your bun and make it look a little flashy. You can also get a tiny tiara and stick it in the front a la Grace Kelly or Elizabeth Taylor. That's what they were doing in the 1940s when they wore their tiaras. There are many tiaras that simply attach with a comb that are meant to go right directly in the front of an updo or a bun that make any updo look super cute. Or you could be like me and get yourself a full Victoria crown and simply pop it right on top of your bun. I love the bun tiara. I haven't worn it in a minute because I'm lazy and updos are just, I mean, if I do an updo, I want it to be clean. I want it to be slick and it takes a lot of time. But when I do wear the Victoria crown, honestly, that I think that's the public's favorite when I'm out in my everyday life wearing that one because people don't know what to make of it. They don't know what it is. <laughs> Now for my men out there, I know you might be feeling a little bit left out and I know you're here and I wanna have your back too because crowns and tiaras are typically feminine items. Now, some of you have no problem wearing them regardless and you're just like, I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear. Do you, I don't, doesn't matter, okay? Live your life. But for those of you who are sincerely trying to find an undercover way to bring a bit more of the royal regal fashion into your everyday life, I got your back too, men. My suggestion for you are the circlets. The circlets look very plain and most people don't really know what to make of it, but most people know it's not a tiara. So they're gonna look at it and be like, that's new and that's different. But they probably, they might ask you about it, but they're not gonna automatically assume you're wearing just like a full girly rhinestone tiara, right? So circlets would be my advice to men also. Besides the crowns for men, because crowns can be very hard to pull off if you are a man. But if you really do wanna have a bit of the regal fashion, my other kind of suggestion to you, epaulets. Epaulets are those frilly things on the shoulders that we have seen in like every Disney, old school Disney movie when we see Prince Charming and everything or the Prince outfits, they have the dangly, what the hell, tassels that come off of the shoulder. Those are called epaulets. Epaulets can be put on nearly any jacket or you can really get creative with the use of epaulets. We've seen them come back in fashion. We've seen them being worn on runways. Um, I'm going to have a custom jacket made with epaulets on them. But if you are a man and you really wanna have that princely look or effect without throwing a crown on, I suggest epaulets. Put it on your jacket, sweatshirt, find a way to work it in. Instant Prince Charming, babe. Now as sovereign in this court, I have the authority to make my own traditions and break any rules that I want. And I grant you the authority to do so as well. Wear whatever tiara or crown you wish, whatever makes you happy. If anyone dare question your decision, just tell them the sovereign said so and send them to me. By all means, live your happy life. I'll deal with them. In the comments section below, let me know what you think about your new freedom to wear tiaras as you please. Are you going to try to invest in a crown? Are you gonna to try to wear one? Do you already wear one? When do you wear one? How many crowns are in your collection? Don't ask me how many are in mine, okay? You don't need to know. Yeah, I, I, and I'm not being defensive. I'm not being defensive. I know I have too many crowns, but I just can't help myself. I have one for all the different types of styles that I wear and it's great. Okay, but just leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And like I said, if this is your first time or maybe you've forgotten, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to see your fabulous face again. I love you, I'll miss you, and you know I will be back in a future video. Bye!